Crystal, did you eat the meatloaf? The meatloaf that I made this morning for your sister? Don't tell me you finished the whole thing. Yeah, I ate it. Was I not supposed to do that? I told you not to eat any meat or fish without asking first. How many times do I have to tell you? They are not made for the likes of you to just devour like that, okay? What do you mean the likes of me? I'm your daughter just as much as my older sister, so why do you discriminate and mistreat me so much all the time? Why do you always favor my sister no matter what the situation? I mean, what kind of mother are you? Think of it as your punishment for being born when you shouldn't have been born. You entered my body without my permission. That's your crime, and that's why you should be punished. What? Do you think I chose to be born? Why do I have to listen to such harsh words from you and be accused just for being born all because I had some meatloaf? I was just hungry, so I had something to eat before I went to the library. Was that such a horrible thing to do? Library? Why would someone like you need to go to the library? What do you mean, why? Someone like me shouldn't even study? Is that what you're saying? I'm so ostracized in my own family and have no one else to rely on. I know better than anyone that studying is my only option if I want to have any chance of creating a decent life for myself. Oh, is that so? What studying are you even talking about? You don't have what it takes. You're not even going to be able to go to college. So wake up from your fantasies and come back home now to do your chores. Why wouldn't I be able to go to college? I'm going to go to university no matter what. Huh! Do you think our family is rich or something? There's no way we can afford to send the both of you to college with the mere salary that your father earns. There is such a thing as an order to this universe, okay? Your sister came first and you second. So, your sister is going to college and you'll go to work directly after high school. You can contribute to the household by earning money and also help pay for your sister's tuition. No way, why should I do that? Because you should be forever grateful that we didn't just throw you away to the orphanage or abandon you on someone else's doorstep. That's why. Even though I never wanted to have you in the first place. Don't you think it's your humanly duty to repay us with gratitude for feeding you and raising you until now? You didn't even breastfeed me because you thought it was too much work and annoying, and now you want me to repay you for what you've done for me? You never even bought a single pencil for me when I was a kid. And yet you bought all the pretty dolls and expensive toys for my sister's birthdays. All my clothes are hand-me-downs that my sister grew out of. Well, she was always dressed and made up like a princess. I swear I would have believed that you were my stepmother if there wasn't such a resemblance between us. Can you even begin to imagine how hurt and confused I was as a small kid growing up in a house like that? So what? Do you think you're so special? Everyone does that. They wear hand-me-downs from their older siblings. It's not like we have a money printing machine at home, okay? With what money do you think we can afford to dress the both of you in new clothes in the same way when you two are just one year apart? If you were going to complain so much, then you should just never have been born. Do you think that I had any choice to have you myself? So then why did you have me? Maybe you shouldn't have, after all. Your grandmother was so adamant that this time I'd give birth to a boy, and she threatened to separate your father and I if I didn't have the baby. So, I had no choice and had to do it against my will. But it turned out that you were just another girl. And of course, my relationship with your grandparents became a whole lot worse after it turned out to be just a girl, all thanks to you. I've never had a peaceful day in my life before your grandmother. That old crone died, alright? Oh god, not this story again. You never get tired of the same old story, do you? Yeah, I don't. So don't mention again about going to college and whatnot, and instead think about making money in a factory after graduation. How many times do I have to tell you that that's the whole reason that you're born? No, I refuse to agree with you. Whether I borrow from a friend or get a student loan, I'm going to take care of the tuition myself. The moment I get accepted into college, I'm getting out of here. That's the only way I'm going to be able to truly live my life. What? Get out! 
if you leave, then who's gonna do the chores around here? Don't be talking such nonsense, all right? And what, you're gonna borrow money from a friend? You're not even old enough to have a fully developed brain and you're already thinking about borrowing money from here and there. I can see it now. Exactly how your life will turn out. Anyway, what friend are you even talking about? Don't tell me you're dating some boy. Your sister did say that she saw you walking past with a guy the other day. Was that your boyfriend and not just a friend? So what, am I not allowed to have a boyfriend either? My sister has had plenty of boyfriends already. Am I not allowed to have one myself too? Do you think you're the same as your sister? You should know your place. How would you even date a guy as a girl in your position? Wanting to date men at such a young age and being such a tramp? I can already tell that you're going to have not such a bright future. And the kind of boys that would want to date you, well, I don't even have to meet them to know what they're like. Probably from a poor family and an ugly good-for-nothing, too. You know the saying, birds of a feather flock together. Oh, you think my boyfriend is from a poor family? At least he lives a lot better than us, okay? He lives in a huge house with a big garden and his family has a maid. He's from a different kind of world from ours. Well then, why would such a well-to-do guy want to date you? If you're going to lie, then at least try to make it a little bit believable. Break it off with that good-for-nothing boyfriend of yours and go meet a guy that I set you up with. What guy? I told you about him the other night. This man that I know who owns a building and is super rich. If you marry him, then you can live the good life and do whatever you like without wanting for anything. So don't complain and go and meet him at least once. Well, if he's such a catch, then great. You can introduce him to Amelia, who you love so much. Amelia is going to college and going to meet the love of her life and have a beautiful romance. So why would she want to date an old man like that? He's gone totally bald and short like a dwarf. A middle-aged man passed his prime. How dare you say he's your sister's match? Unbelievable! Oh, so you think it's okay for me to date such a guy but not for her. Right. Didn't you carry me in your womb for nine months and give birth to me just like her? I don't think even a stepmother would treat me with such cruelty. Just shut up, will ya? You should just be thankful every day to me for not getting rid of you when I had the chance. I should have just thrown you away on someone else's front door as soon as you were born. So, just do as you're told and stop complaining, all right? If you got married to a rich man, then it would be win-win for the both of us. Do you think an opportunity like this would happen again? I already have someone I like, and I'm never going to meet someone that you set me up with. So just give it up, Mom. If you're not going to listen to anything that I say, then get out of the house. Go on, crawl out of my house with your belongings like some kind of homeless beggar. Is that what you really want to say to your teenage daughter? Teenage? Don't even kid yourself. You already know all about men and you don't even listen to your own mother. So I don't know who this teenage daughter is that you're talking about. I don't need any daughter like you, so just get out of my sight. Our horribly unwelcome relationship ends right here and now. So don't you think about making an appearance in front of me ever again. Do you really mean that? You want to end our relationship as mother-daughter for good. I am 100% sure of it, so don't even call me your mother anymore. And don't even bother saying hello if we ever run into each other in the streets. Whether you live or starve or freeze to death, it's none of my business now. Ma'am, are you sure that you want to throw away your daughter, Crystal? What? Who is this? This is Crystal's boyfriend. Are you really getting rid of her like you said? You insolent kids! You two are not even out of high school yet, and you're running around together in the middle of the day doing God knows what. Yeah, I got rid of her, so what? What are you going to do about it? Okay, then I'll take her. What? I will take Crystal from now on. Huh, you think this is funny, do you? You want to take a girl for yourself. Listen to yourself talk. I can tell what kind of uneducated little brat you are just from this small exchange alone. Anyway, you can take her and boil her alive, or roast her over a fire to eat for supper, because I'm getting rid of her for good. 
Hey, Crystal Honey, I heard you're getting married soon. Your aunt told me about it. If you were gonna get married, then you should have contacted me first. How can you let someone else tell your own mother about the news of your wedding? I'm sorry, who is this? I don't have a mother. My own mother, who is not even a real mother to me, died six years ago. Don't say that even if you're just saying it out of anger, all right? Here I am, your mom, alive and kicking, and you're saying such horrible things about me? That's no way to treat and respect your mother who gave birth to you and raised you. You told me yourself that you gave birth to me because you didn't have any choice. And you gave me so much trauma by discriminating against me and favoring Amelia all throughout my childhood, and you still think of yourself as my mother? You were the one who told me to never come into your sight ever again. So why are you being nice to me now, huh? You know, I was just showing you some tough love, all because I wanted you to become a more independent person. Now that you've grown up so well all by yourself, you have no idea how proud I am of you, my little baby girl. Oh my gosh. You're giving me the chills right now with your fakeness. Your little baby girl? I've never heard those words in my life, and honestly, they make me feel so awkward and uncomfortable and just sound so distasteful to my ears. Really? You're gonna make me barf, so just stop it already. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. We are mother and daughter and connected by blood. If I wasn't alive, then you wouldn't have been born, and you would not have been able to have the kind of happiness that you have now. Anyway, I heard that you're getting married into a rich family. Don't those sort of families look into the backgrounds of the people they're marrying into? Suppose they found out that you're some kind of orphan without a mother. They'd never accept you as a member of their household. Why are you worrying about dumb stuff like that? My future parents-in-law already know all about my situation and they actually took pity on me. They're the kind and caring people that accepted me and raised me with love for six years. What do you mean accepted and raised you as a daughter for six years? I've been living with them ever since you kicked me out of your own house six years ago, at my boyfriend's house. What? Your boyfriend's house? You mean to say that that rude and disrespectful little kid was really the son of a rich family? Yeah, just like I told you. No way that that's true. Why would such a well-to-do son of some rich family want to marry someone like you? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, I don't really understand it either. I wonder what he saw in me. Someone who was cold-hearted and protective of her heart like a hedgehog because she was never loved as a child. Somehow he was able to accept me into his heart without any limitations. Maybe God took pity on me and sent me a blessing in the form of an angel. Since I was never loved by my parents and had such a rough start of life, you should hand over your boyfriend to your sister to hook them up, you know? You were born to hand over all the good things in life to your sister. That's the reason you came into being and it's your destiny. What? Are you out of your mind? Even after six long years and yet you haven't changed at all? Do you seriously think people are things like clothes or shoes that you can just hand over? You think you can just take someone away if you want them for yourself? Well, I don't see why not. I'm sure you've already made all the reservations and plans for the wedding, so we can just exchange the brides. Wow, I think that you need to go to a therapist and get a checkup done. Really, I'd rather go talk to a cow than talk to someone like you who's not right in their own mind. I'm going to block you forever, so don't even call me disgusting things like your little baby girl ever again. And don't bother pretending to know me if we ever run into each other in the streets. Crystal, wait. Listen to your mother, please. I beg you. I don't have anything more to say to you or anything else I want to hear from you, all right? All right. I won't tell you again to hand over your fiancé to your sister. But can you please send me some money? The truth is, Amelia wasn't able to get a job and she had a tough time with money, so she got herself into a little bit of debt and she wasn't able to pay back that debt in time and now it's grown and grown into this massive amount. It's not the kind of money that we'd ever be able to pay back on our own. You're engaged to the son of a rich family and you're earning good money for yourself too. And we're your only blood relations. I mean, we're a family after all. Family. She always took advantage of the fact that you favored her over me and always took all my things. 
and she was always trying to destroy any plans and dreams that I ever had for myself, so no, I don't consider her to be my sister. We didn't tell each other any secrets or worries we might have like other sisters might do. Having such a sister who is no better than a stranger, or rather yet, who's worse than a stranger. I forgot about and got rid of her in my mind's eye a long time ago. Still, you are sisters born from the same parents. No matter how much you hated, she's your older sister. Your sister is about to live a life full of burden and grief that's not really living, being chased around by debt. And yet you don't feel an inkling of desire to help her out, and you choose to be selfish until the very end? Who do you really think is the selfish and cruel one in this situation? I don't have anything more to add, so I'm going to block you now. No, wait, Crystal! It was all my fault, okay? I'm begging you, so please help us out. That day I threw you out, and those harsh words I said to you. I'll repent it over and over as long as I live, alright? So please, just give us one last chance. No thanks. Don't ever interfere in my life ever again. Don't ever show that shameless face in front of me ever again either. I will get a restraining order if I have to, so that I never have to deal with such toxic people like you lot. So don't contact me ever again. After that day, I blocked my mom and my sister from my life. I don't even know how they're living now, but they're probably living every day feeling as if they're walking on top of a half-frozen lake trying to constantly escape from their debt. Well, it's no longer my business how they live their lives. We came into this world as a family, but all they did was hurt me, and the connection unfortunately had to end as it turned into a terribly toxic relationship. Because I never wanted to be dealing with those people ever again just for the sake of being related by blood. On the other hand, I married my longtime boyfriend who took care of me and comforted me for all those years, and now I'm actually pregnant and awaiting the birth of a new life. It's my small wish that I'll live every day happily so that I can make up for all the sad days of the past. Hey, you need to leave my man. I need to be married to him already. But I can't do that when you're still in the picture. So, I need you to be gone from his life. Who is this? What on earth are you talking about? And how dare you talk to me like that? Do you even know who I am? Of course I know who you are. Your husband isn't home yet, is he? And he's never been home before 11 p.m. lately. And you also can't stand his snoring, so you guys sleep in separate rooms. How did you know that? Like I was saying... Your husband is my man. I know him better than you ever will. He's been super worried about upsetting me, so he's been lying to you and saying that he needs to work late. When in truth, he's here with me. I've been telling him that I hate sharing him with you. Did you know that's the real reason why you guys use separate grooms? Why he doesn't even touch you anymore? What are you saying? He doesn't touch me? Oh, then tell me how am I pregnant right now? That was a drunk accident and you know it. It's your cunning schemes. You tricked him into getting you pregnant. That was your only way to keep him. He doesn't even love you. You should be ashamed. Don't use your pregnancy as a means to keep a man. Do you know how devastated he was when he found out you were carrying his child? You've just made a mess of a situation. He was so apologetic that he couldn't go up and leave you and your pathetic baby. So you knew I was pregnant and was still okay with having an affair with him. Don't you dare speak about my baby with your filthy mouth. You're his mistress. You're having an affair with a married man. How dense are you? Do your friends know that you're a homewrecker? Leave my friends out of this. All you got going is the fact that you're pregnant. You have nothing else. And none of that is going to work anyway. I don't care if you have his baby or not. I'm marrying my man either way. I'll give him plenty more children if he wants. He doesn't want a child with a woman he doesn't even love. Face the facts and leave him. I don't care what you do with that child. <sighs> I was the one to get married to him, but didn't realize just how much of an idiot he is. It's unbelievable he'd have an affair with a low-life woman that's as uncultured as you are. I knew something was up when he started paying attention to his appearance, dressing nicely, having plans without me. 
but I never thought he'd be the type of scum that would have an affair while his wife was pregnant with his child. Six years of marriage. In shambles. In an instant. I thought we were something special. Even back when we first started dating back in college. I never thought my life would be the subject of some soap opera story. I can't believe this is happening to me. I guess you never know with men. How he would betray me like this? I hate to break up the pity party, but there's no point in you staying with him. He doesn't love you. You'll never be happy with him. All that stuff about you guys dating in college like it means something. I'll have you know I actually went to the same high school as your husband. He was into me way before you guys even met in ninth grade. I was way out of his league, mind you. He was just some chubby nerd kid back then. I ended up rejecting him when he told me he had feelings for me. He moved to a different city for his dad's work shortly after. I lost contact with him for a while. That is until we met at our high school reunion last year. I could see that he was a totally different person. So much taller, so fit, and so established in his field. Not to mention generous with his money. Naturally, I was a little curious. We started chatting about the good old days, flirted a bit. And he had such a cute memory of me as his high school crush, you know? And as you can guess by now, the rest is history. There's no way that you can compare our love story to yours. Owls is real. It has history. I'm the one that got away. The one that he worshipped for so long. And after all these years, he never forgot about me. There's absolutely no questioning who he loves more. You really should have figured that out already. That's a lengthy answer to a question I never asked. So let me get this straight. You want to marry a man who had an affair while his wife is at home pregnant with their child. I don't know what you're even thinking, but once a cheater, always a cheater. There are so many guys you can be with out there, and you choose him? A cheater? Yeah, I do. And you're right. He is absolutely terrible. Exactly why you should leave him. So you are divorcing him, right? Well then, got it done already. A shocking contact from the woman my husband is having an affair with. I had a gut feeling that something was wrong when he stopped caring about the things that he used to. The short replies, the emotional distance, always looking at that phone of his. He was never home on the weekends. Truly, there were signs and I ignored it. Or maybe I just didn't want to believe it. And nothing in the world would have prepared me for what I just went through. His mistress? Contacting me? I was in shock. But I knew that I had to be strong, if not for myself or my unborn child. My husband eventually admitted to everything. He seemed to be aware of the damage he's done, and as some sort of redemption of the pain he caused, he also gave me his word that he'd look after me and my baby, to do everything he can to support us financially, to do whatever it takes to give us a comfortable life without him. So the divorce process began. I was putting things in place with the little energy I had left when I got yet another text from that woman. I told you to divorce him. Why haven't you done it yet? What is taking so long? Is it still so hard to let go of a man who cheated on you? It's a legal process and we're still technically married. It's a lot more complicated than an ordinary breakup. There are a lot of things that need to be put in place and it won't happen overnight. We need to settle on an alimony, child support, so many things we need to consider. Uh, why didn't you say so? Did you really think that I'd rob you out of your settlement? I'm not that heartless. Oh, so you do have some common sense? That should make this a better experience. Look, I'm willing to pay you the alimony and the child support or whatever. Just agree that you'll be left out of his will. What are you talking about? I know that his father left him with over a million dollars when he passed. Surely you didn't think any of that money was going to go to you now. Oh, so you were after his money this whole time. Speak for yourself. You're probably not wanting to give that up either. If you divorce him, you know that you're not entitled to any of that. Which is probably why you keep delaying the whole thing. But guess what? That changes nothing. You can't fix a broken marriage. You're still married to a cheater who's madly in love with someone else. Me. You're in no position to tell me what to do, so shut it. And trust me, when it's ready, I'm going to divorce that cheater and never look back. So stop contacting me. Really? You mean that? Well, then hurry up.
I don't have all day. There's nothing good in putting this off. Stress is bad for your baby, you know. The audacity of this woman. She had no shame. Now that I've decided to go through with the divorce, there really was no point in me delaying things. So I found a divorce lawyer, and we swiftly got it finalized within a week. I eventually had to move out of her house, the house my father-in-law gifted us when we got married. Even though I was devastated and spent most of the time crying myself to sleep, I needed to be strong for my unborn child. It was just the two of us now, me and my son. For the next six years, life seemed to go on. Then, all of a sudden, I see a painfully familiar contact pop up. Hey girl, we haven't spoken in a while. Has it really been six years? I still remember taking your man away from you like it was yesterday. Also, you getting kicked out of your own home with your enormous pregnant belly. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Time travels fast, doesn't it? You must have had it rough as a single mom. Or maybe not so rough since we gave you more than enough money to get by. Why did you contact me? Are you checking to see how miserable I am? To mock me after all these years? Or are you worried that he'll eventually come back to me? Is that why you're checking up on me? What? I heard you were terrified that he'll regret being with you one day. So much that you did everything you could to cut me completely out of his life. Where are you really that scared? Where did all that confidence go? Like the time you were telling me that he was madly in love with you? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. That's actually the reason why I contacted you. Also, we won't need to pay you child support anymore. What? He died yesterday. Took a one-way trip to the underworld. <laughs> Are you seriously making jokes right now? Someone you loved passed away and you're not sad? Why would I be sad when I know that he's free from all the burdens of life? I'm pretty sure he'd be sad if I was sad. What a horrible wife I'd be if I made him sad, right? <sighs> so, what do you want? What do I want? I already told you. I don't have to pay you child support anymore. The house is entirely mine now. And the million dollars his father left is also all mine. Is that why you're so giddy? I'm sorry to break it to you, girl. But he already paid child support up front. Didn't you know this? What? He did what? I never heard anything about that. Oh, so you didn't know. He paid us several visits during the last years of his life, too. I guess you never noticed since you were always out partying. What? He was with you guys? Behind my back? I don't believe it. When he got diagnosed with cancer, he really had it rough. While he was dying, you were out there living your best life. Always going out, leaving the house, always in a mess. You didn't even bother to be there for him during his chemotherapy. From early in the morning till dawn, partying and doing God knows what. The last year of his life was so rough, his body, mind, and soul all deteriorating so fast. And you, his wife, weren't there for any of it. Buying designer goods, going on expensive trips were much more important to you. What? How did you know that? How did I know? Well, he came to me and told me everything. He looked like he was about to collapse at any moment. He kneeled in front of us, apologized, saying how much he regrets everything, and then begged us to find the heart to forgive him for everything. I can't believe this! We both eventually met with a lawyer when he knew he really didn't have much time left. You met with a lawyer? What for? What kind of scheme are you plotting? He left us all of his estate. Literally everything he had. He updated his will with a lawyer. He wanted to make sure that we got everything. He said that he finally wanted to make things right before he passed on. Is this true? He went behind my back and did those unspeakable things? I'm his wife. All of that is rightfully mine. Whatever will situation you're making up isn't going to take away what's due to me. You think I'll just let this happen? I'm getting a lawyer and suing you for everything. I will get what's mine. Stop making things up. Did you say wife? What wife are you talking about? You're not his wife. You're still his mistress. Surely you knew this. What nonsense are you talking about? We legally got married six years ago. I signed the certificate with my own hands. You're just spewing garbage because you don't want to give me the money. I don't believe a word you say. If you don't believe me, 
Go look it up in the marriage registry. He's legally single. And the only next of kin he has is our son. What are you talking about? I signed the certificate when we got married. He told me that he was going to file it himself. How on earth would I not be the next of kin? Oh, so you had no idea. His mother was livid when she found out what happened between us and wouldn't let him file the marriage certificate with a woman he had an affair with. And out of respect, he listened and just didn't file the marriage certificate. Did you really live with him for six years and you didn't know this? That's kind of sad. No way. So I don't get anything. This makes no sense. He can't do this to me. You're the one he divorced. He left you for me. But you're getting all his money? Why wouldn't it make sense? I have a son with him. And not only his estate, I also get the million that his mother will leave us. She drafted a will saying that her son will inherit all of her estate when she eventually passes. Our son is her only grandchild. And she absolutely adores him. It's only natural that she wants my son to have the best life possible. She's constantly giving us money to help support us. She still sees my son every other day. They have such a special bond. No way. I can't believe this. I kicked you out of your home and took everything from you. But you were receiving all that money this whole time? And now you're taking more money? What's supposed to be mine? From me? This can't be happening. I have the right to that money. At least give me half. That's cute. It's not going to happen. Now, get lost forever, homewrecker. You were a piece of human trash when you came into my life six years ago, and not a single thing has changed. That's all you are, and all you'll ever be. How does it feel that your name isn't mentioned once on my husband's will? Now that he's passed away, we definitely wouldn't have any reason to talk to each other. I'm giving you three days to pack your stuff and get the hell out of my house. And if you don't, I'll call the police for trespassing. Now get lost! After that, Stacy was kicked out of the house without a cent to her name. And even though I had fond memories of my marriage in that house at one point, the thought of my ex-husband and his mistress having lived here, the pain they caused were enough for me to eventually sell the house. Meanwhile, my son is thriving, getting all the love he deserves from his grandparents. And I too have found a job that brings me fulfillment. It's the blossoms of spring, the gentle rain on summer nights, and the softness of the winter snow that sometimes reminds me of the person I used to be. Someone who loved someone, unconditionally, faithfully, and without sorrow. I still can't stop thinking about my ex-husband. Although he caused so much pain in our lives that may never fully heal, there is still something in my heart that holds on to the beauty that is love. Maybe it's all the wonderful memories we once shared. The innocent, pure love that we all miss and eventually look forward to. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.